art lesson. My name is Mary Ann Strimstripper, but you can call me Mrs. Strim. So what's easy, cheap, and clean? Easy means that anybody of any skill level will be able to make this project. Cheap means you probably have the materials around your house already. If you're a teacher, I'm sure you have them in the classroom. But if you don't, you can purchase anything that you need at your local dollar store. Clean means we're not going to make any mess. Well, just maybe a little, but not very much. So let's get started. Today's project is Frida's Flowers, inspired by this artist, Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican artist, and she loved to wear flowers in her hair, kind of like in this picture of her. And also in this book, we can see that she loves to decorate with flowers and other objects, but we're going to look at flowers today. And the kind of flowers we're going to be making are tissue paper flowers of different kinds, you can see here, and of different colors. So let's get started. We're going to first take, um, find out what kind of materials that we're going to need. And in this project, you will need the following. You will need some tissue paper. The tissue paper can be different colors, or it can all be the same color. The tissue paper can be brand new tissue paper. This came out of a packet uh, that I got at the dollar store. Or you can use used tissue paper. Maybe you've put some in somebody's uh, birthday present or something like that. But you're going to need three pieces of tissue, full pieces. These are small. But if you have smaller ones, we can figure out how to make that work because this tissue paper is going to make three flowers. In addition to tissue paper, you will need to have another piece of paper, and that piece of paper is a piece of computer paper. You need about one of those or maybe more depending on how many flowers you want to make. You're also going to have to have a pair of scissors some kind of glue. It can be liquid glue or it can be stick glue, either one. You're going to have to have something that is going to uh, tie these all together. So one of the easiest things is a stapler. But if you don't have a stapler, you can use a piece of string or in my case, I've got a piece of ribbon. Or you can even use a twist tie that you get from your bread uh, or something else that uses twist ties. You're also going to have to have a pencil. I'm hoping you can find all of these things around your house because that's the whole idea between about easy, cheap, and clean. So we're going to not make any mess at all with this project. We are going to be making some tissue flowers. So first, we're going to make sure that we have our tissue paper aligned. So aligned means you're going to put them all together, kind of like this in one corner, and sort of pat them down so that you have them all together in, um, in order, in alignment. Then you're going to check this. You're going to check a, these lines that sort of come with the tissue because when they come folded in the packet, they're usually like this. Not always, so if you don't have the lines, we're not going to worry about it. But we're going to start by folding this big piece of tissue paper, these three big pieces, like so. Now when we fold them, these lines are going away from us. So here we go, first fold. Now that fold is not a very thick, uh, hard fold, so we're not going to press down. It's kind of a, a fluffy fold, I think I we're going to call it, because I don't want to make it into a line. Then I'm going to fold it one more time. And why I'm doing that is I can get it into a compressed packet so that I can come with my scissors and cut on my three lines. So I can cut here one and cut here two. So only two cuts is all you have to make with these scissors. That way you're going to have one, two, three flowers. So the three flowers, if you, if you have narrow tissue, used tissue, and you can't make that many, just make sure that you can make one. Or if you're really ambitious, you can make one huge flower. There's lots of festivals in Mexico, so I think that, uh, or even in the United States, that you could use these colorful flowers. We'll talk about what you can use them with later on. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to cut here and cut here. But since I keep doing this and running out of tissue paper, I have one all ready to go over here so that we can put this aside. Uh, 
And then I'm going to put my packet together that I have already of tissue paper. So this is one third of what we just looked at. If you need to use a ruler or a yardstick to measure, that would be fine to cut them, but it's not necessary. It doesn't have to be perfect. In art, we're never perfect. So what we're going to start to do now is we're going to start to do what's called an accordion fold. An accordion fold is very simple. We start out by folding a little bit of it backwards. So in this case, I am going to make a good fold and not a fluffy fold. And just try and keep it aligned as I go down. Now, you might want to measure this with a ruler, which is about a half an inch or so. But I like to measure with my finger or my thumb and figure out how big. And mine are, fingers are kind of fat. Yours might be skinnier and you can use two fingers. So I'm going to make that first fold. Once I have the first fold done, I take the whole packet and I reverse it or turn it upside down. And then I'm going to make another fold. Now accordions are musical instruments and they are, um, they have also, they're also called a squeeze box. So what we have to do is we have to be sure that we're going back and forth and turning it over. Make a fold, turn it over. Each fold should be approximately the same size as the one before it. Now I'm going to make a mistake here in a minute because I like to make mistakes to show you what not to do. So this is a fold and I, whoops, I forgot to turn it over. So I make another fold. Well, it's yellowed. Isn't that what it's supposed to look like? No, because when I look here, I can see I'm going to be in big trouble. So what I do is I unfold it and what should I have done? Turned it over. So I'm going to turn it over and continue on all the way to the end. And as I go, I want to be really careful to not let these folds get a lot bigger. I want to try and keep them so that they're even. And from the side, you can see that it looks like an accordion or a pleat. Maybe you have a pleated skirt. Sometimes those are in fashion, sometimes they're not. I'm not sure what they're doing right now, but that's also called a pleated skirt, maybe. Maybe you have pleats in a shirt. But in this case, we're making the pleats to make a flower. So we continue on till we get to the end. And when we get to the end, what we have to do is we have to be careful that our last one, I'm going to switch out because I have this one folded already. I'm going to show you on the last fold right here. You see this little bit right here? You might want to take one more fold and put it in. You don't want it to be hanging over this side like this. It's okay if you don't do it that way. It's okay. So now the next step is to figure out how we're going to um, fasten it. So the fastening can be done with these things. We can fasten it with a stapler. We can fasten it with a piece of string, or we can fasten it, or, or yarn, or yarn even, yarn would work, and a ribbon, or we can fasten with a twist tie. So this time I'm going to fasten with what's probably the hardest, and that's the stapler. But before I fasten it, I have to make a decision as to where the middle is of this flower. So what I do is I fold the flower in half. Now I didn't do this one time when I got one side really bigger than the other, which really didn't make that much difference. But if you want to be as good as perfect, as close to perfect as you can, you want to do this. So I open it up and I find that I have a fold. Now here's a big mistake. I like to show mistakes. A mistake would be to staple right here. Why? Because my staple would be going this way. It needs to go across. So then instead, I'm going to take it and carefully put it underneath here and then give it a big staple, a big one right, bam, like that. And if one isn't enough, then you can do two. So I'm going to set this one aside and show you one that I have that I tied with a string because you might want to see how that one goes. I tied it like this and then I tied it as tight as I could, but it works the same as a stapler. The next step is we're going to have to round the edges of the flower. So you can see that this one, I didn't do such a great job because the yellow sticks out over here a little bit. Maybe I didn't cut it straight. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my thumb as a guide and I'm going to see that I need to cut a curve just like my thumb. Now I don't want to cut my thumb 
that would hurt. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take my thumb out, remembering that that's an upside down U, and cut off this right here. Okay, that's one side. You can see how it's much nicer edges now. And then I'm going to go to the other side. If you cut them straight, that's okay. But it looks a little bit more like a flower if you cut them rounded. So I put my thumb there. That's my guide. I'm going to go around my thumb being really careful. I sure don't want anybody to cut their fingers. So I'm going to go like this, and then we're done. Now we have a whole bunch of confetti here. So if you're having a festival, if your mom doesn't care, I suppose you could throw it in the air. But whatever you do with it, you want to make sure that you clean it up. So I'm going to push that off to the side. And now another big decision has to be made. How am I going to open this flower? Do I want to open it with red in the middle of my flower? Or do I want to open it with yellow in the middle of my flower? Or if I had the blue one, did I want blue? It all makes, uh, whatever, whatever uh, flower you've made, you get to make that choice. For some reason, I want the yellow in. I'm feeling in a sunshiny mood today. So I'm going to take the yellow, and I'm going to start to open the yellow to the middle. I'm going to be so careful because I don't want to rip anything. So I bring my fingers as close to the center as I can, bring it close to the middle, and then we're going to do a fluff or a pull or a, 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 a zhuzh, whatever you like, whatever word you like. But what I'm doing is I'm very, very carefully moving this to the center of the flower. You can see how that's working. Sometimes it reminds me of a daffodil when I'm doing this flower, but in the end it doesn't look very much like a daffodil, unless I left the rest of it flat, but I don't usually do that. I like to fluff it all the way. So I have one side fluffed. It took me a while. I don't really see the ribbon very much anymore. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to start on the other side. So I want to do the fluff of the yellow on the other side. Always coming right as close to the middle as I can. You see I hold one thumb there and I pull with my finger and thumb on the other hand. Whichever you're left-handed or right-handed, however you want to do it. Sometimes, if you're really young, your mom and dad might, or mom or dad, or a big sister or brother might want to help you out. So that you don't, whoops, I did a tear there. Is that all right? Sure. It's not a problem because it's all going to be not seen when I get totally finished. So I want to keep moving as much as I can. Gets harder when you get to the end. Doesn't want to give it up very easily. But just keep on going till you get all the way to the end. You see it takes a little while, but it's all right. It's a good thing. So I'm going to take it. Now I'm really going to zhuzh it and push it to the middle. See what I mean? If it was all yellow around here, it would look like a daffodil or a jonquil. So my next layer in this case is going to be a blue. So then I start taking the blue and I move it out. It's the same process all the way around. So you don't want to spend a whole video watching me do this. So I'm going to bring in one of the flowers that I have finished already. And here it is right here. And set this one aside so you can see that I have the flower. But as you can also see, it's attached to a stem. So the stem is made using a piece of white paper. We want the stem to be strong. The reason I want this one to be strong is because I want to put it into, I'm going to come over here and get this up, a vase of flowers that I have. And I'm going to put it in with this vase, just like this, so that I have flowers in a vase. If you can see it like this, there we go. So how do I make this stem? It's very strong. It's not spindly. I didn't use um, pipe cleaners because I knew this is too heavy and it would fall over. So the stem is made out of a piece of white paper. And you use the white paper and a pencil. So here's my pencil. And I'm not going to write on this, but I am going to turn the paper so it's a little catacorner from me. So I've got these two corners lined up. This will make something called the stick. The stick is really an easy thing to make, and it's a lot of fun to do 
uh, many things with. You don't have to just make it into a stem. You might find some other things that it can be used for. I bet you can think of a lot. Um, anyway, the stick is very strong, and the way to make it strong is like this. So I'm going to take my piece of paper, roll it over the pencil, like so, and then start rolling the stick over the pencil. The problem is my pencil, as you can see, is going to get caught up in the stick. So every once in a while, I pull that pencil out a little bit. And then I just keep rolling with my fingers, see how it's going. And there the pencil's going to get caught again. So I pull it out again. So I keep going, keep rolling as tight as I can. You're going to get to a point about here where you can take the pencil all the way out. Keep it tight though, don't let it unroll. If you let it unroll, you'll have a big fat stick and you don't want that. So I'm getting close to the end. And as I get close to the end, I'm going to get my glue out because I'm going to need the glue. And I open it up. Either glue works. This glue glues faster. The Elmer's glue might glue a little harder. So however you do it, your, your triangle at the end might be different shape than mine, but it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to put glue here and glue along here and a little bit of glue there, a little extra. So I have put glue all around this. And then I'm going to go real slow and roll it into the glue. And when I roll it into the glue, I now have my stick. So the good news about this stick is it's made out of paper. So on paper you can color, you can draw, you can cut, and you can fold. So this is what we're going to do. First step is to cut it right here. So I cut that end off, turn it around. I'm holding on to this because I want it to stay where it needs to be and cut it here. Now maybe you've seen your mom put flowers into a vase before and she wants the stem to be the right size or dad put them in or somebody put them in and you can cut this any size you want. You could even make two out of this. I like to keep it a long one because I had a long vase so that's what I did. So I've cut the ends and you can cut them to whatever size you need and then what you're going to do is you are going to bend one end. Because it's paper, I can bend it. So I'm going to bend it and flatten this out. When I flatten it out, what could have been used for straw, I guess. So I flattened it out. And now I'm going to take my flower. And you can see that I've done it with this one. And I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to put glue on the end, like so. Oops, that got a lot of stuff on it, didn't it? And then I'm going to put this right here onto the flower, just like this one is. Now this one's been done already, so you can see that it moves back and forth and it would move the way I wanted to. The other thing I did is I thought, well, maybe I want a green one. So I started to color it with a green marker, which would work if you wanted a green stem, if you didn't want that. And then if you really had some construction paper or some other colored paper or just plain white paper, you can color the paper and make some leaves if you really wanted leaves. But I didn't care to do that, but you can if you want, it's up to you. So that's a little leaf I just cut out of construction paper. So at this point, our flower is finished. We have other flowers that have a different treatment. Instead of a rounded um, edge, I, you can see I cut a, fr a fringe edge. You might wanna do a fringe. This one is a fringe as well. Uh, and you have to decide what you want to do with the flowers. Now in Mexico, they have fiestas. They have a fiesta every chance they get to have a fiesta. And at the fiestas, they have a lot of these kinds of flowers. That's why Frida must have liked them in her hair. She put real ones in, but I think she put paper ones in as too. So what can you do with this? You can take one. I took this one right here and I put this uh, uh, pin on it so I could put it into my hair. And so I had a flower in my hair, just like Frida, I kind of like that. Or you can take and put them, again, like flowers in a vase. You can line them up, put some string through them with a uh, uh, special kind of a needle onto, uh, you can put it on fishing line, and you can have a whole row of them hanging in your house. Or if you have some kind of tape that your mom is okay or dad is okay with, you can glue them on the wall, or you can make them into I was thinking it would be kind of a pretty door decoration. So it's up to you what you want to do with these flowers, but I celebrate today with you 
Frida Kahlo and her inspiration. So these are Frida's flowers. And thank you so much for coming to an easy, cheap and clean art project. And remember to keep your heart in art. Thank you very much.